Hey guys, I wanted to take some time this Friday to talk about Conspiracy 2 and what its actual impact is for the finance of Magic the Gathering. And these will be my Friday one videos will be slightly longer and maybe more detailed in my rationale and logic. Conspiracy 2, I've never seen a set like this drop prices that, as fast as the cards in this set have dropped. Uh, it's both amazing and something that I think we should encourage. Uh, one of the reasons the prices have dropped so much is every store can order 150 and reorder 250 boxes. It's unlimited. It will be at Walmart. It will be at Target. It'll probably even be at Toys R Us So and Barnes & Nobles. Conspiracy 2 Take the Crown has just been printed into oblivion and beyond. And even if store owners don't reorder, you know, Walmart, large stores are going to have this for a very long period of time. And the product will just sit there. Uh, when you have product that Target, Walmart, assuming that like you have a Kmart, I don't know if Kmart still exists or if it's bankrupt, but big box stores, when they carry a product, they move a large amount of it, especially if it's casual, far more than any local game store can move because there's so many of, there's way, way more Walmarts at, and Targets and Barnes and Nobles than local game stores. And each of the Walmarts, if they continue to sell well, they will continue to reorder at very large volumes. So Conspiracy 2, unlimited print run in pretty much any type of store you can imagine. That's why the prices have tanked as much as they did. And it's a good model. I think it's a it's not a great model for local game stores, but it's a good model for the players because it gets these cards extremely cheap. Would I ever expect some of these cards to be at the prices they're currently at? No, I couldn't imagine a scenario where you can buy show and tell near mint for $18. And I don't even know what that would look like. Um, but it looks like a unlimited set released to Walmarts, Targets, any amount of stores, and allowing local game stores to have maximal rebuy whenever they want. That's not going to end. And Conspiracy 2 is a very interesting model moving on. I don't want to talk about it just today. But should they have done something like Eternal Masters with an unlimited print run under the same scenario and allowed Walmart to sell them as well, then we would look at prices which are much, much lower than they currently are for those staples. And if they did Modern Masters the same way, what is your opinion? So I want to get what you guys believe. Is it good? Is it bad for the game? I've always been very supportive of reprints. And it makes the game cheaper. It makes p people play uh, optimal versions of the deck. So I know people want to say, oh, I want to be a rogue. I want to build my rogue deck. Um, that's fine. But I think most people should have access to the cards to play tier one decks if they choose to. Maybe they choose not to. But that's a different argument than if they cannot. Because they cannot afford the game. Conspiracy 2 is an incredibly interesting model for me as someone who is does talk about MTG Finance because it it may be the model moving in the future. Uh, Wizard of the Coast has obviously uh, done a ton of reprints, anthologies this, anthology that, uh, from the vaults, even in recent sets, uh, the cons, fetch lands, and I don't see it ever stopping. So the secondary market which drives up the price and that's why you have cards like Lily of the Veil and Snapcaster Maids at way too much money than they should be. Uh, the secondary market is now part of Wizards of Coast's marketing plan, I'm sure, that they have looked at the numbers, they've crunched the data and they figured why should we allow uh, vendors and uh, to take advantage of the players this way, we should just reprint the cards and make it affordable for everyone, which I agree with. Now, not everyone's going to agree with this opinion, and it is a opinion that a lot of local game stores are not going to agree with because they have overhead, they need, they provide a place to play, and Conspiracy 2 is a disaster for them. It's an absolute blood. It's 
crazy how ridiculously how much money most stores are going to lose from this not even saying that they make money they will probably lose money from carrying this set and it's sad it is very sad but i feel like this business model for wizards of coast isn't going to change given what they've shown in the past so stores will have to sell better food they're going to have to sell better drinks they're going to have to uh, and this is what i've seen in my own local store is now they offer pizza on fridays it's five dollars and they make it a event it's a really fun event uh, they make sure the air conditioning is nice and cold because we're down in texas there's always you know foods and snacks and it's just a fun event uh, where uh, the lore is always on and the poke up. They just added these extra stuff because they realize um, the players buying binders, buying sleeves, buying random singles, that's where they're going to make money from, not necessarily boxes. Um, and Conspiracy 2 is the first box outside of Dragon Maze that the store I go to, the two stores I frequent, have lost a lot of money in. Dragon Maze was a bloodbath, but this one is a lot worse because they ordered a ton more of them so overall conspiracy 2 is a very interesting model allowing uh, wizards of the coast to bite into the secondary market and control it uh, really they can control it they can reprint any card not on the reserve list and they can reprint it as many times as they want in an unlimited print run show and tell being in this set uh inquisition of kozak which has no reason i mean just the flavor wise there's no reason to be in this set in a draft set I like it. I really do like it. Anyway, that's my longer rant today. Uh, have a good weekend, and hopefully I'll make some more videos. Bye, guys.